Let's go to John chapter 14. There's a word coming out of John. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. A very familiar passage. It seemed like it's really needed right now. As, as we heard so many events that has taken place during the week. Amen. 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 The word of God says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, uh -huh. I will come again and receive you to myself, where? that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Uh -huh. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, where? and how can we know the way? Uh -huh. Jesus said, I am the way, uh -huh. the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Uh -huh. On today, it feels like we really need it. I want to talk to you from the subject. Jesus wants us to be encouraged. Amen. Jesus right. wants us to be encouraged. Uh -huh. Many of us have experienced a storm or two uh -huh. in our lives. Well, we were th thinking that it seemed like it was never going to go away. Uh -huh. We thought since it hurt so bad that the pain was going to be there forever. Uh -huh. uh, we have faced rejections. We have faced defeats. Uh -huh. And even like me, we have failed and come short of the glory of God. Amen. We have let people down. We have let people feel disappointed. Some that thought highly of us. We even said things that we shouldn't have said. Amen. We had done things that we shouldn't have done. We have experienced and created enough negative feelings to destroy us. But here it is. We must be very careful. Often the most painful wounds are not the scars that you see on the outside. But the hidden wounds and deep on the inside that cannot be seen are the most dangerous. And that's why you have to be careful on what you say and how you say it to an individual. You must be careful on what you do and how you do things for an individual. Because all it takes is one hurting word. All it takes is one thing to do something wrong. Then there it is. The hurt begins all over. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, setbacks in our lives, struggles in our journeys, trials that come our way can take the joy out of living life. Even our faith can be weakened in times like this. But there is good news for the children of God. We have a word that's come from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. This is a word that we can stand on in the test of times. Matter of fact, it is the text that we find in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. This is a familiar text that speaks a vital message to our hearts. As you look at this text, you will see where Jesus starts out saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And since this evening, I don't want to hold you long. I will be leaving a lot of meat on the bone of this text. But I want you to know that whatever you're going through, we can be encouraged. Because when you look at this text and read chapter 13 and read chapter 14, you will see that Jesus on the eve of his death, he was standing in the very shadows of Calvary, yet at this time he was encouraging his disciples. He tells them that he's going to die. He tells them that one would betray him. He even let Peter know that he would deny him, not one time, not two times, but three times before the morning comes. Knowing this, 
It made their hearts very heavy. But even in his darkest hour, even in his greatest trial, Jesus still showed his love by reaching out and comforting and encouraging others along the way. And this evening, I just want to give you these three points. And I take my seat on showing you how that Jesus wants to encourage us. First of all, we see the assurance that Jesus gives. Look what he says in verse 1. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. See this text, my brothers and sisters, bring assurance. It helps us get rid of our fear that cause trouble in our heart. Remember, again, Jesus just told the disciples that it was about it was going to bring about fear. What he told them, rather, it told them that it was going to bring trouble in their life. But he knew that he was getting ready to die and he knew that one was going to betray him. He even knew that one was going to deny him. So what could they do? Well, the best thing they could ever do is just trust in God, trust in the Lord. Trust in what he said that he would do and what he was going to do. And I'm here to tell somebody today, if you need encouragement in your life, you need to just trust in the Lord. Trust in what he's going to do in your life. Trust what he's been, he already done upon the cross. Because in this Christian life, we will have tough times. We will go through the heartaches and pains. We will have tribulation. But he never told us that it would be easy. Matter of fact, he said that in John 16, verse 33. He said that these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, but in the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus, again, is giving these encouragement statements to his disciples. And therefore, I want to tell somebody today that when times do get hard, in the midst of our difficulties, in the midst of our pain and suffering, we can, give the, we can receive the assurance that Jesus Christ has made everything all right. We are assured that he's an overcomer of the world. We are reassured that we can be of good cheer because what he has done, there's no other man can do. And we can trust and never doubt that our Savior has already worked it out. Because the salvation of the righteousness come from the Lord. He is our strong tower. He is our peace of a prince of peace. He is our wonderful God. He is our shelter in a time of storm. He is our protection when I when we need it most. It's good news to know that he is our hiding place. I'm reminded what the scripture says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is a God that would never fail me, nor would he leave me, nor would he forsake me. So in times like these, I have learned how to stand on the unchanging God who has blessed our soul. Again, Christ says, let not your heart be troubled. Just believe in Christ because Jesus wants to encourage us. So again, we see the assurance that Jesus gives. But next, we see the anticipation that Jesus gives. Look at verse 2 and 3. These are more encouraging words. Words by Jesus. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. You can be encouraged and you can get excited about that. Because these are some exciting words. See, the anticipation of every Christian is made in three folds. Number one, the anticipation of heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Notice, Jesus is gone to prepare a place for us. We as believers, uh, you know, there are many things that man are man-made that give us that ooh, ah, and wow factor. You know, some of us go wow when we see the pyramids in Egypt. 
Some of us go ooh and ah when we're downtown areas and see some of the highest skyscrapers. Some of us go wow when we see fancy cars and nice homes. All of this that's made by men. Even myself, I go wow when I'm at the amusement park looking at those big old hills, those G-forces, those loops, those curves up on the roller coaster. Something brand new to my heart. Wow, that's what I say. But don't you know, my brothers and sisters, in my father's house are many mansions. Get that, in my father's house, many mansions. Wow, whoa, major, boom, that's exciting. And guess the good news about it? This is what ought to encourage us all. I go to prepare a place, not for me, but he says, for us, you, I, all of us that believe, that's something I can get excited about. Yes, the amusement parks get me excited, but that's a temporary joy. This here I have, the world didn't give it, so the world can't take it away. This joy that I have has been given because of what Jesus have done upon that old rugged cross. And it's a great joy to know that he's gone to prepare a place for me. In my father's house are many mansions. I can anticipate his return. I can expect his return. I can't wait for his return. And I can count on his return. And it gives me great joy because he's telling me and he's letting me know that I can be encouraged. Uh, you may have your experiences in life, fancy homes, fancy cars, beautiful places to see, things to be at, but it's temporary. But oh, when we get to heaven, what a time, what a time. Can you imagine? I can't. It's better than what I can imagine. Y'all, heaven is a place where God operates. Heaven is a place where the Lord's throne is at. Heaven is a place where they praise him with music. Heaven is a place full of praise. Heaven is a place full of service. Heaven is a place that's full of comfort. Heaven is a place that's full of rest. Heaven is a place where we can all rejoice. Heaven is a place, a beautiful place, where the streets are paved with gold, where the gates are pearly, where there won't be no more uh, S-U-N shining because the S-U-N is, uh, S-O-N rather, is always shining. That's a place where the wicked will cease from troubling. That's a place where the weary will be at rest. And I'm like the songwriter, won't you come with me to my father's house? Because they'll be singing, they'll be shouting, they'll be lifting up the name of Jesus. In my father's house are many mansions. Do you have a place in the father's house? Again, he encouraged us with the anticipation of going to heaven. But then he encouraged us with the anticipation of meeting Christ. Notice he says that where I am, in other words, where I will be, you will be with me. Meeting Christ. Beautiful. That's great. That make you ought to say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You see, many people want to meet the president. Many people want to meet the vice president. Many people want to meet their favorite movie star, sports star, music star. They anticipate that. But oh, when I get to heaven, I may say hello to Peter, and I may say hello to Paul, but I'm going to run to Jesus, the one who paid it all. I want to give him a big hug. I want to place the throne of uh, the crowns on his, at his feet. I want to lift up his name higher and higher and say thank you for what you have done. I know it may not seem a lot, Jesus, but I want to say thank you for paying the price that no other could pay. So again, we anticipate heaven. We anticipate meeting Jesus. But the last one, we anticipate meeting family and friends. He says, uh, you need to just trust in him. And one day you will see him again. 
But don't you know, you'll see your loved ones again. There are some friends that have gone before us. There are some family that has gone before us. I think of Reverend Bird who has gone before us. I think of my mother Clara who has gone before me and my wife. There are some fans like Uncle JC, my uncle, have gone before us. But then one day, I truly believe that when it's all said and done, there will be no goodbyes. But it'll be howdy, howdy every Sunday. Sunday will never have an end. Sabbath will never have an end. I'll be able to see heaven. I'll be able to see Jesus. I'll be able to see family and loved ones. That's encouraging to me. So again, he gives us assurance, the anticipation. But last and not least, Jesus also gives us the answer. It is encouraging to read this part here in verse 5. He says, this is what Thomas says. He says, Lord, we do not know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And I like what Jesus said in verse 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, not, not, not any man, can come to the Father except through me. I thank God for Thomas' question because it helped me a long time ago. It just let me know that Jesus, he is the answer. Matter of fact, Jesus is the only answer. He's the way to eternal life. He didn't say, I will show you the way. He didn't say, I am one of the ways. He didn't say, I will be a way. But he says, I am the way. See, many follow Jesus, but still don't have faith in Jesus. Can I say that again? Many follow Jesus, but they don't have faith in Jesus. See, follow is work, but faith is believing. And I can't do anything to save my soul, but I can trust in Jesus Christ who have made me whole. See, you can follow him and still be lost. Uh, you, he was baptized. But you can be baptized and still be lost. He loved everybody. You can love somebody and everybody and still be lost. He was a man of prayer. You can pray and still be lost. He went to the temples. You can go to church and still be lost. It's good to follow Jesus, but it's better to trust in Jesus because he is the way. And salvation comes through faith in Christ Jesus and Jesus alone. He's not a man that will lie, but he is the truth. And he is the life. All you have to do is just trust in what Jesus has done. Because he did something that no other could do. He could not, we could not save ourselves. But he became a sacrifice for the sinner. Over 2,000 years ago, yes, our Savior died on a hill called Calvary. He died late one Friday evening, but early one Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands. I stopped by to tell you just to keep on keeping on. I stopped by to tell you just trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. I stop by to tell somebody to be encouraged. Hold on, be strong because God will work it out for you. How many know that the Lord will work it out for you? I'm here to tell somebody that we serve a risen savior he lives forevermore i stopped by to tell somebody that the lord that we serve wants to encourage you be encouraged i know that it get hard sometimes but you got to keep on keep on trusting in god may god bless you and may he keep you is my prayer